ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله الله رحمه للعالمين وقدوه للمؤمنين ومحجه للسالكين وحجه للعباد اجمعين انار الله به العقول وشرح به الصدور وفتح به اعينا عميا واذانا صما وقلوبا غلفا فاللهم اجزه خير ما جزيت نبيا عن امته ورسولا عن دعوته ورسالته وصلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وعلى جميع من استنى بسنته واقتفى باثره الى يوم الدين اما بعد فاوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله تعالى فانه من يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا ويرزقه من حيث لا يحتسب all praises due to Allah alone in him we seek aid and assistance and to him we turn both in repentance and for forgiveness truly him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides none can mislead and he whom Allah leaves to go astray, there is none who can guide. And I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship save Allah alone. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is both his servant and his messenger. We have come, alhamdulillah, to this month of Ramadan. This month of the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of his forgiveness and his mercy. And it is a difficult tragedy that unfortunately the masajid remain closed due to the virus that has created a pandemic around the world. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow this difficulty to pass and allow the people to be able to return back to the masajid. And we are only here, just a few people, the staff of the masjid, to make sure that there's some type of salah happening in the masjid. There's some type of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happening in the masjid, even in this difficult situation. And we're joining you with the live stream so that you can feel some connection inshallah to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even though you will pray bi'idhnillah four raka'ahs with the intention of dhuhr by the end of this bi'idhnillah. Uh, this month that we are in is the month of the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an hudan lil-nasi wa bayyinatin min al-huda wal-furqan. That this month of Ramadan is the month in which Allah revealed in it the Qur'an, a guidance to the people. And it was revealed in Laylat al-Qadr. Inna anzalnahu fi Laylat al-Qadr. Allah says, we revealed it in the night of al-Qadr. Inna anzalnahu fi Laylat al-Qadr. Inna anzalnahu fi Laylat al-Mubaraka, Allah says. We revealed it in a blessed night. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhi says, the Qur'an was revealed in its entirety to the first heavens on that night, in the month of Ramadan. And then it was revealed slowly to the Prophet ﷺ over the course of his prophethood. And we need to understand that this month is the month of the Qur'an. To understand the relationship that exists between the Qur'an and between the month of Ramadan. So that we can properly value the importance of the Qur'an. So that we can connect to the words of Allah. So that we can read each chapter of the Qur'an and as we read it, we say, you know, I have certain emotions, I have certain feelings and connections to Allah when I read this verse, when I read this surah. We need to have this type of relationship with the Book of Allah. That you say to yourself, when I read this surah, I feel like my relationship with my parents needs to improve, that I have to do this better. That when you read this chapter of the Qur'an, you say, you say, you know, my sense of generosity, my charity increases. That you have a real living connection with the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And first, let's look at the value of the Qur'an. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says in the hadith that is narrated by Ali ibn Abi Talib. He says about the Qur'an, describing its power and its majesty. He says, فِيهِ نَبَأْ مَنْ قَبْلَكُمْ وَخَبَرُ مَنْ بَعْدَكُمْ وَحُكْمُ مَا بَيْنَكُمْ وَهُوَ الْفَصْلُ لَيْسُ بِالْهَزْلِ مَنْ تَرَكَهُ مِنْ جَبَّارِ قَسَمَهُ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ ابْتَغِيَ الْهُدَى مِنْ غَيْرِهِ أَضَلَّهُ اللَّهِ He says, the book of Allah, it contains the knowledge of that which has happened before you. News of what will occur after you. And it is decision between the matters which will occur amongst you. It is the distinguisher and it is not in jest. He says, if the one who is overbearing abandons the Qur'an, the one who is arrogant abandons the Qur'an, Allah will cause that person to be broken by it. And whoever seeks guidance other than it, Allah will cause them to go astray. 
He says, "Who hablu Allah al-Matin, wa nuruhu al-Mubin, wa dhikruhu al-Hakim, wa huwa al-Sirat al-Mustaqim." This very beautiful long hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam describes the Quran that it is the strong cord of Allah, and it is a wise reminder, and it is the straight path. And it is that which the desires do not swerve, nor do the tongues become confused. It is that which those who are intellectual cannot fully understand it, and yet those who are simple can also learn it. And he says, it is that that does not become worn out by repetition, and its wonders do not come to an end. And he mentions all of these beautiful blessings about the Qur'an, and the hadith is lengthy and it continues. But what is the beginning of this hadith where the, where the Prophet ﷺ gives us this deep, eloquent description of the Qur'an? It begins with Ali radiallahu an, with the Prophet ﷺ saying to Ali radiallahu an that there will be a time of fitna. There will be a time of trials and turbulations. And these trials and turbulations will be so intense, they will be like pieces of the darkness of the night. And Ali radiallahu an tells the Prophet, what should I do if this happens? What should I do if there are trials and tribulations, hardships, difficulties, pandemics that become so difficult, we don't know what's right from what's wrong, we don't know what to do. We don't know which way to turn. Pieces of the darkness of the night. Imagine being in the darkness of the night, there's no moon, no stars, no cell phone, no flashlight, nothing. How do you know what's right from what's wrong? Which direction you should go to? And the Prophet ﷺ said to him, hold on to the book of Allah. And then he described the book of Allah with the description that we just heard. And so this is what we need to hold on to in times of difficulty and panic and hardship. But let me pose you a question as we have come to this month of Ramadan. Does the Qur'an give honor to the month of Ramadan? Or does Ramadan give honor to the Qur'an? And it's an interesting question. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala references the relationship between Ramadan and the Qur'an more than He does fasting in the Qur'an and Ramadan. Like fasting mentioned in relation to Ramadan happens once. Yet the Qur'an mentioned in relation to Ramadan is mentioned constantly. And you see this even in the hadith of the Prophet wasallam. For instance, the Prophet wasallam he said, Jibreel came down and had me review or recite the Qur'an to him every year during the month of Ramadan. He said, except this year, and this was the last Ramadan the Prophet ﷺ lived, he said, except this year, I reviewed it twice with Jibreel. And so there's a relationship between the Qur'an and Ramadan. Jibreel is coming down, saying to the Prophet, recite all the Qur'an back to me. Review the Qur'an with me. Right? And so it is in fact the Qur'an that gives honor to Ramadan. Because of the greatness of the Qur'an, because of the nobility of the Qur'an, Ramadan has significance. And so if it weren't for the fact the Qur'an was revealed in Ramadan, Ramadan would have been an ordinary month. Were it not for the fact the Qur'an was revealed on Laylatul Qadr, Laylatul Qadr would have been an ordinary night. And yet the Qur'an being entrusted to Jibreel, made Jibreel the best of the angels. The Qur'an being revealed on the Prophet Muhammad made him the greatest of the Prophets. The Qur'an being revealed in the month of Ramadan made it the greatest of the months. The Qur'an being revealed in Laylatul Qadr made it the greatest of all the nights. And so we need to beware and be afraid of coming to a situation where you're celebrating something that you don't know the meaning of it. Imagine going to a party that's a celebration and you don't even understand the reason of the celebration. You're celebrating without knowing the reason that you're there. What kind of celebration is that? And so beware of us living the month of Ramadan and celebrating the day of Eid. We don't even know why we're there. The reason this month is this month. The reason this month is given its status and its reward and its forgiveness is because of the Qur'an. So as we enter this month, we have to enter it attached to the Qur'an, reciting the Qur'an, thinking over the meetings of the Qur'an. And the Prophet ﷺ tells us in so many ahadith the value and the importance of memorizing and reciting the Qur'an. He said, اقرأوا القرآن فإنه يأتي 
يوم القيامة شافعا لأصحابه He said recite the Quran because it will approach, it will come on the day of judgment and it will be interceding on behalf of the one who recites it. You recite Quran, that recitation that you did will come, Allah will allow it to embody a certain form and it will arrive on the day of judgment and it will argue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in regards to you. It will say, oh Allah, forgive this person, enter him into Jannah. He used to recite the Quran. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ الَّذِي لَيْسَ فِي جَوْفِهِ شَيْءٌ مِّنَ الْقُرْآنِ كَالْبَيْتِ الْخَلِبِ He said, the one who has no Qur'an emitting from their mouth is like a house that is ruined. It looks like a house, but it's of ruin, it's of destruction. Nobody would want to live in it. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ وَالَّذِي لَا يَقْرَأُ كَمَثَلِ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ He said, the example, the parable of the one who recites the Qur'an and the one who does not recite it, is the parable of the one who is alive and the one who is dead. The one who is alive, their heart is alive, connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who's reciting the Qur'an has life in their connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. And the one who does not recite the Qur'an, it's like that connection, that signal between you and Allah has died. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ قَرَأَ حَرْفًا مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ فَلَهُ حَسَنًا وَالْحَسَنَةُ بِعَشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا لَا أَقُولْ أَلِفْ لَا مِيمْ حَرْف وَلَكِنْ أَلِفْ حَرْف وَلَا مُنْ حَرْف وَمِيمْ حَرْف And the Prophet وسلم, to encourage us to recite the Qur'an. He said whoever recites a letter from the Qur'an will receive a reward. And that reward will be multiplied by 10. And then the Prophet said, and I am not saying that Alif Lam Meem is a letter, rather Alif is a letter, and Lam is a letter, and Meem is a letter. Meaning even if the person just recites Alif Lam Meem, immediately that is three rewards. And those three rewards are multiplied by 10, that is 30 rewards. And the Prophet is encouraging you to recite the Quran because this is the lifeline between you and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ahlullah, Ahlul Qur'an, Ahlullah wa khasatu. He said the people of the Qur'an, Ahlul Qur'an, the Ahl is literally the family, the people of, the tribe of, the clan of. He said the people of the Qur'an, the tribe, the family of the Qur'an, who are those people? The ones who memorize it, the ones who think and understand its meanings, the ones who implement its instructions in their lives. These are the people of the Qur'an. The Prophet ﷺ says the people of the Qur'an are the people of Allah. They are the Ahl of Allah. You know, in pre-Islamic Arabia, you said someone is from your Ahl, somebody is from your family, somebody is from your tribe. That means those are people that are your tribe. You defend them. You fight on their behalf. You never punish them. If someone tries to harm them, you do whatever it is in your power to defend them and protect them. That's the pre-Islamic tribal mentality. And the Prophet ﷺ uses that mentality to allow people to understand the relationship between Allah and the Qur'an. If nobody in pre-Islamic Arabia would ever throw their own family, their own clan into a fire, would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throw his own ahl into the fire? The ahl of the Qur'an are the ahl of Allah. Those who are the people of the Qur'an are the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يُقَالُ لِقَارِئُ الْقُرْآنِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ it will be said to the people who recite the Qur'an on the Day of Judgment, they will be told, recite and you will be elevated. And indeed, you will stop being elevated with this last verse that you recite. The more you have memorized, the more that you are able to recite, the higher you will be elevated in Jannah. And the Prophet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does something very unique in the Qur'an. That some chapters of the Qur'an are begun by praising Allah for his creation over the universe. And some of the chapters are begin with the praise of Allah for his revealing the Quran. As if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that on one side, think of the creation of all the universe, the humans and the jinn and land and, and the heavens and the earth and all of this. And on the other side is the Quran alone. And the Quran alone is as much or more or greater than all of the rest. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you Tabarak alladhi bi yadihi al-mulk wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir He begins one chapter by telling you Tabarak, blessed is the one who has the kingdom who has dominion over all things wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir and he is powerful over all things And then he tells you Tabarak alladhi nazzal al-furqan ala abdihi Another chapter begins Blessed is the one who has revealed the furqan revealed the Qur'an 
over his servant. Allah begins one chapter by telling you, Alhamdulillah, الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور all praise belongs to the one who created the heavens and the earth. So he's talking about the creation. Another chapter of the Quran begins, Alhamdulillah, الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا. All praise belongs to the one who has revealed the book upon his servant. And so the book that is sent upon the servant, on one hand, whenever Allah is describing the greatness of what he has created, the stars in the heavens and the earth and the moon, he swears by the greatness of the Quran. It is like saying that the Qur'an itself is greater than all of the creation combined. And look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the greatness of the Qur'an. He calls it in some places the ruh, the spirit. وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا رُوحًا مِّنْ أَمْرِنَا And such we have revealed a spirit of our command. This is a reference to the Qur'an. And this is a powerful description. What does it tell you? The creation. The universe, without the Qur'an, has no ruh, has no spirit, has no soul. The world, without the Qur'an, becomes something utterly materialistic. It becomes robotic. Why? Because it does not have the Qur'an. It does not have that ruh, that soul, that spirit that comes with the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the Qur'an, in other places describes it as shifa, as a healing. وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ we have revealed of the Qur'an that which is a healing and a mercy for the universe. The Qur'an is a healing, a healing for our hearts, a healing for our worries and depression, a healing, a healing for our losing hope, a healing for our entire ummah. Allah called it a healing and a spirit or inspiration. And He called it huda, He called it guidance. كتاب أنزلناه إليك لتخرج الناس من الظلمات إلى النور بإذن ربهم إلى صراط العزيز الحميد. Allah says this is a book that we have revealed to you that you may bring mankind out of darkness to light. Allah calls it a light as well. The people without this book are living in darkness. This book that is on our shelves that gathers dust throughout the year. This book that may be ignored in the corner of your house. This book that we leave and we open it, the odd day that we open it, and it's in perfect shape because we rarely ever leaf through it. This book is a light. It is a guidance. This book is a mercy. It is a spirit, an inspiration. The people without this book are disconnected from Allah, without a soul and spirit. The people without this book have little mercy in their lives, living in depression and difficulty. And Allah Azza wa also calls this book Burhan. What does Burhan mean? That which makes things clear. It answers the questions. All the essential questions of our lives are answered through this book. Why am I in this world? Why am I created? Where did I come from? Where am I going? What's my end going to be like? There's no philosophy that can answer these questions. They can only guess. They can only ponder. And usually if you hear the answer of a philosopher to these deep questions, it leaves you with even more questions in mind. It leaves you even more confused than when you began asking the question. But the Qur'an is the Burhan. Allah says, Ya ayyuhan nas qad ja'akum burhanun min rabbikum. O people, we have revealed to you a Burhan from your Lord, a clarifying evidence, a clarifying proof that when you read the Qur'an, those deep questions that other people's answers make you more confused. The Qur'an gives you simple, powerful, empowering, grounding answers. And Allah says, we revealed this book as a conclusive proof and a clear light over all things. And this is why the companions had such a deep relationship with the Qur'an. Anytime some of them would hear, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who believe, they stood up straight. Why? They said, we know if Allah says, oh you who believe, the next thing that is coming is either a commandment that we need to do or a prohibition that we need to abandon. Allah is about to tell us something. He's speaking to us. I need to respond to what He is telling us to do. Ibn Qayyim, he says, the best thing that Allah ever says to the believers in the Qur'an is, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, oh you who believe. Because Allah could, could have addressed us many different ways. He could have said, oh you who are sinners, and he would have been truthful. 
Oh, you who are low and you would have been truthful. Oh, you who are weak and you would have been truthful. But he said, Ya ayyuha ladina amanu. Oh, you who believe. He chose the best characteristic that we have, our belief in Allah, and he called us by that characteristic. Oh, you who believe. And I remember reading a scholar who said the difference between how we read the Qur'an and between how the Sahaba read the Qur'an is that we read it for blessings. I need some barakah. I need some blessings. Let me read it. And they read it in order to follow it, to understand it, to learn it, to practice it. And that's a problem that we have in our community. Sometimes we only recite the Qur'an when, when someone dies, when someone's getting married, when, when a problem has happened. That we, we feel like we need some blessings. Okay, let's read the Qur'an. We need some blessings. But that's a problem because we don't have that relationship with the Qur'an. We've put barriers between us and the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to remove those barriers. We need to have a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the relationship the Sahaba had it with the Qur'an, that they understood it. One of the Sahaba used to recite Surah Al-Ahad every single cha- every single prayer he prayed. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Every single time. Not for the reasons we might do it, we might do it because it's short. But he, even if he recited a lot of Qur'an, at the very end he would recite قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ And some people went to the Prophet, they said, Ya Rasulullah, this guy always recites قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Ask him what's his problem. So the Prophet said, call him over. And he asked the man, why are you doing this? And the man said, لِأَنَّهَا تَصِفِ rahman He said, because this chapter describes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, describes the most merciful, and I love to recite it. I'm reciting it because I love to do so. And because it describes Allah. And the Prophet wasallam said to him, Allah loves you. Or tell, they said to the people, tell him that Allah loves him. And subhanAllah, a relationship that he has with the Qur'an. He's thinking over its meanings. He has a connection with it. He's so connected to these verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the type of connection that we need to have with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِيُذَكُمْ اسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ نَوْفُورُ رَحِيمٌ بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا Just before I conclude inshallah, I just want to give a simple advice to everyone. Do not be intimidated by the Qur'an. Don't be intimidated by learning it or reciting it or spending time with it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرُنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكَرِ We have made the Qur'an easy for remembrance. So are there anyone who will remember it? The Qur'an might seem challenging for people who have been disconnected for a while. It might feel challenging for people who have not studied it and read it in a while. But if you put in the effort, you will find it to become incredibly easy. Memorizing it becomes easy. Understanding it becomes easy when you put in the effort. Allah tells you, promises, we have made it easy. And in fact, it is easy when you put in just a little bit of time. If we put in mountains of time to read the books that other people have written, we would not be able to memorize it. But the Qur'an is far easier and simpler for us to memorize. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us rhetorically, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا That will they not ponder the Qur'an? Do they not reflect over the Qur'an? Or has it been sent to hearts upon which are locks? And so we want to ensure that our hearts are not the ones that are locked to the words of Allah, that are open to the words of Allah. Put in the effort, inshallah, this month in particular. Spend some time, try to memorize, try to learn, you know, know your abilities and try to grow those abilities however much that you are capable of doing so. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you blessings through this book that are far greater than anything else that you have experienced in your life. And I just want to, before I conclude, you know, request that everyone, inshallah, to ensure to pray at home for raka'az with the intention of Salat al-Dhuhr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward each and every one of you.